a week from now is July 31st, 2019. That is the day that my visitor's visa in Canada runs out. And it's also the day I no longer have a place to stay here, which is convenient. What's up y'all, it's Rachel Elizabeth and you're watching Real Talk with Rach, where we talk about real things because it's the real, honest, hard, vulnerable things that get us deeper in relationship with others and deeper in intimacy with God. And since it's Real Talk with Rach, I'll go first. This last week has been one of those weeks where I have to keep listening to last week's episode to remind myself what I said to encourage myself and keep clinging to Jesus. And if y'all didn't watch last week's episode, go watch that real quick so you know what I'm talking about. But it's been a real struggle and there's some weeks that are easier than others and there's some weeks that I don't have to re-watch the video to remember what I said. And sometimes, even while I'm recording, God will use the words that he's speaking through me to you to minister to my heart and encourage me. He uses everything. He's so good at keeping us. The Bible says we need to abide in Jesus. Yes that is something that we need to do. We have to keep choosing him, but we do so knowing that he has forever chosen us, that he only had to choose us once, and that he will never change his mind about us. It's us that have the fickle mind. We have to remind ourselves. We have to keep choosing him. We have to remember that he's always chosen us. I don't know about you, but that's super encouraging to me, especially when I'm in the middle of this crazy faith journey. This adventure with God that he called me on before I left my home in 2017, God invited me on this adventure with him that I thought was gonna last a week. And if you've been following me for any length of time, you know that it lasted way longer than a week. In fact, the purposely homeless portion of this faith journey ended March 1st when I moved up to Canada. But the unknown still looms in front of me because now I don't know where I'm going after I leave Canada and that is within the week. And typically God has been very consistent in telling me where I'm going, but he hasn't this time. And that's okay because he is not to be predicted. And when you hear me say that God is unchanging, that doesn't mean that he always does things the same way. It just means his character and his nature will never change. Who he is will always be the same. If he was your provider before, he will be again. That provision just may look different than it did the first time. If he was your healer before, he will be your healer again. The healing just may look different than it did the first time. And just as each person's faith journey looks different, we can still learn things from watching others because he is the same, even if he does things differently with each of us. Another way to explain that is that he is the creator of all things, and it's only the created that make duplicates. The ultimate creator, our God, our Jesus, he makes originals, and he never makes mistakes. Everything that he does is good and beautiful. That said, I know that my journey isn't just about me. In fact, he led me to start this vlog series, Real Talk with Rach, way before I knew that I would ever be on this faith journey. But it's been such a beautiful, beautiful thing to see that he's used it as a platform for me to share this journey with you so that he can share his faithfulness with you through how he provides for me. Which is another reason why I know that I know that I know that he already has a place in mind for me. So even if I don't know where he's leading me, even if I don't know where I'm gonna be living, I know he's gonna come through because he does these things. He is faithful, he's unchanging, and he works all things together for our good, all things for our good, for his glory, for his namesake. Because his name is on the line, he's gonna do what he said he was gonna do. He never, ever doesn't keep his word. And I could go into all the ways that I know that he's promised me that I'm gonna have a secure, safe, peaceful place to live and that he's gone before me and all these promises. But I wanna focus on why I am on this journey. I wanna focus on why I said yes. I honestly can't remember if I've ever told you why, but here's the simple answer. It's for more of him. Once you know that God is real and that he is for you and not against you, I can't explain it other than saying that your heart recognizes its maker and there is an intimacy that begins there in that place, in that realization, in that revelation that will never be the same. You will never be the same once you realize that the God of the universe who made you so intentionally and fearfully and wonderfully wants 
intimate relationship with you. He wants to walk with you and do life with you and speak to you and hear your thoughts and dreams and passions that he gave you. And he wants to walk with you to the fulfillment of every purpose he has for your life. Another one of the reasons why I'm on this journey, why I said yes to this journey, is because I take Jesus at his word and I can't ignore the words that he's spoken that burn in my heart. I have to take him at his word. When Jesus said follow him, that didn't mean clicking a blue button that says follow on an Instagram profile so that we can keep tabs on what he's doing. No, when Jesus said follow me, he meant imitate him, learn from him, replicate him and what he is doing. In Luke chapter nine, he said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow him. Y'all, that wasn't a parable. He said in this world we'll have trouble. He said that if people hate him, they'll hate us. He even said that those who choose to lay down and give up possessions and family and homes for his sake and the sake of the gospel, yeah, they won't fail to receive back a hundred times more in this life and the next, but with that, they will also endure persecutions, hardships, trial, suffering. Jesus suffered, was tortured, faced shame, rejection, abuse, neglect, hunger, thirst, excruciating pain, and died. And he said, follow him. I didn't say yes to this journey, this adventure with Jesus, to be some kind of a martyr. Although if that's what he asked of me, I know that he has brought me to a place in my relationship with him where I would go to that length, to any length, no, I said yes to this journey because I love him, <laughs> because he loved me first, because he didn't just suffer and die for me. He rose again to give me new life and he rose again to give me new life in him with his Holy Spirit who lives in me, who leads me and guides me every day. And y'all, I've heard the audible voice of God, but I've only heard it once. Normally I hear his voice by reading his word and asking him questions. Outside of that, he speaks through circumstances, through people, through a still small voice that I know is not me. And I know it's not me because I've gotten to know who he is through his word. Jesus said his sheep know him. They know his voice and they follow him. He also said a stranger's voice they will not follow. If you're his sheep, you have the ability to hear your shepherd's voice and it'll probably sound a little like you, but it'll suggest something or say something that was way too smart for you or ask you a question you never would have thought to ask yourself before. So I do it for him. I do it for deeper intimacy with him. I do it for his promises. I do it because he's worthy. I do it because he did it before I did. Jesus even said, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. And honestly, even though I haven't had my own place since 2017, he's taken better care of me than he took of himself. I've had safe places to sleep every single night of this entire journey. And even if I don't, I still have him. And I wanna say one last thing. I believe God put it on my heart to share this why with you because he's calling more. He's calling his people to take risks and lay down their lives for him. He's calling you to lay down everything. He's seeking those who will actually lay down their lives. He said, whoever tries to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for his sake will find it. What does that look like in your life? Literally, what is he calling you to give up? What is he calling you to lay down? What is he calling you to trust him with? What is he calling you to? Where is he calling you to go? Because he's calling. He's calling all of us to something. Have you counted the cost? Is he worth it to you? Is he worth your anything? How deep does your yes run? Jesus, I just thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for your realness, that you are right here with us tangibly, singing over us, whispering new mercies every morning. God, you are the lover of our souls. You're the shepherd of our hearts, God and you're calling us deeper. So God, for all of those who are feeling the tug on their hearts right now, Lord, I just wanna pray for them that they would say, yes, Lord, I give you my anything, whatever that looks like, Lord, that they would surrender right now, that they would see the cost of following you and know that you are worth anything and everything that it could ever cost us. You are worthy, Lord, you are worth it. We love you, amen. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, share it with a friend who needs it. And if you want to support this ministry in any way, I would be so grateful. There are links in the description box below and in my Instagram bio. I love you guys. I'm praying for you and I'll see you next time.